speech act is action in the speech like we, we perform so many actions as is uh, we can jump we can maybe write we can play now all of these are actions but physical actions S uh, similarly we can perform an action in speech like which is not a physical action rather it is an action in the speech and that action is called speech act then the action performed by a speaker with the utterance is called speech act right so action that is performed by the speaker with the utterance like it's the utterance that is performing an action and we say this is speech act we use the term speech act to describe actions such as requesting now requesting is an action but it is a speech act because it is uh, in the speech or with the utterance now commanding again is a speech act it's an action but it is performed with the utterance questioning and informing now requesting commanding questioning and informing all of them are described as speech acts why because those are the these are the actions which are performed with the speech right so speech act is an action performed by speaker with the utterance is called speech act right now uh, look at the example uh, i'll be there at 6 now this is what we are uh, uh, saying like it is sort of uh, information that we are pa passing to someone but at the same time we are actually promising the person that I'll be there at 6 right so I'll be there at 6 has actually an action of promising right so the speech act here is promising now uh, we have two types of speech acts we have direct speech act and indirect speech act now direct speech act is did you eat the pizza now, if you look at the structure of this, did you eat the pizza? The structure is interrogative. How? Like it is starting with did and it is ending on a question mark. The structure is interrogative. And what is function of interrogative? The function is to question or to ask question, right? Now, look at the second sentence. Eat uh, the pizza, please. Now, the structure is imperative and what is the function that is performed by imperatives is either command or request now it is imperative if you look at the sentence it is starting with verb eat the pizza right so imperative and its function is command or request you ate the pizza now this is declarative sentence and what is its function its function is just to make a statement to give some information right now we have three different structures of sentences and those structures have their different functions right now if or when a structure is used with its respective function it is described as direct speech act right so when uh, interrogative structure is being used to ask a question the speech act is direct speech act when declarative structure is being used to state something again it is direct speech act when imperative structure is being used to uh, give command or request someone again it is direct speech act like the uh, speech acts are actually uh, uh, like the, the structures are having their own or respective function right so there is nothing which we are changing now the example is when we in the when an interrogative structure such as did you are they or can we is used with the function of a question it is described as direct speech act now this previous slide that makes uh, things clear like when interrogative structure is asking a question when imperative structure is giving command or re uh, request, when declarative uh, declarative structure is, um, uh, you can say, uh, making a statement, no, these are direct speech acts. But when, uh, whenever a structure is used to perform a function other than its own function, is known as indirect speech act. Like when 
we use interrogative sentence but that interrogative sentence is not asking a question but is doing uh, it is maybe ordering someone or requesting someone but that would become indirect speech act right now uh, look at the example can you pass the salt now we are not really asking question about someone's ability like can you pass the salt as is can you lift something like do you have ability to lift something similarly when we say can you pass the salt we are not asking the person can you pass like do you have ability to pass the salt no in fact we are making a request can you pass the salt like uh, 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 pass the salt please for example right so we we use the structure over here can you pass the salt which is of interrogative interrogative structure but the function that it is performing it is requesting someone to pass the salt right now this sentence is usually used uh, used on dinner table like you would be asking uh, uh, maybe someone on, on the table to uh, 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 to pass pass the salt and you say can you pass the salt like you don't say pass the salt now that would become an order right but that would be direct speech at that but but when you say can you pass the salt and the the meaning which you are actually intending are of requesting the person to pass the salt now this is indirect speech act right so because the function the structure of the of the sentence that is can you pass the salt that is interrogative but the function that it is performing that is of requesting right so uh, that is why we say this would be indirect speech act then okay now uh, again like it can be clear over here you left the door open i'm using the same sentence and I, i'm trying to make uh, a distinction between direct and indirect speech act you left the door open now look at the structure it is declarative right now what is the function that it it performs the function of declarative is statement right now again take the same sentence you left the door open now the structure over here is declarative but it can perform a function of request or command now you'll have to uh, look at a scenario or a situation to understand this like someone uh, opens the door and comes in into your room right and you look at the person and you see the person has left the door open and you say you left the door open right now in first case you are only giving a statement that the person has left the door open right but if it is cold outside and the person has left the door open and you want to tell the person that close the door so you're not saying close the door rather you say you left the door open and the person goes back and he closes the door now what you are doing you said you left the door open but your uh, your you can say purpose of saying this was to tell the person to close the door right because it was cold outside so uh, what you did like in first case when you just uh, made a statement that you left the door open and your your intention was just to make a statement so your structure was declarative your function was statement right and it was a di direct speech act but in second scenario when you wanted the person to uh, to close the door you said uh, you left the door open your structure was declarative but the function of 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 that structure was to request the person or to command the person to close the door right so this is how we have direct the difference of direct and indirect speech act like in one the structure and function those are actually uh, Uh, you can say uh, as were given uh, in one of the slides like what the function we structure structure performs which function and in second like in indirect speech acts the 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 function that is not of of, of the structure rather it is a function of some other uh, you can say structure right okay now uh, that is all for today so we can just go back and uh, uh recapitulate uh, sum up what we discussed today so we discussed four topics uh 
first one was anaphoric reference or anaphora we said when we refer back like we have a reference at the end and we just check it out by referring back like in the example it that it means a puppy similarly the puppy that again uh, is referring back to uh, a puppy right so whatever is in the beginning is called antecedent and whatever is uh, you can say being used as a reference that would be an aphoric expression or an aphoric reference then uh, we had cataphora so cataphora uh, is reverse of anaphora like it is not referring back rather we refer uh, forward right uh, so here it that is referring to the enormously grizzly bear so it is not going back rather it is moving forward now presupposition uh, presupposition is uh, assumption or uh, whatever we presuppose is true or known to the listener right and uh, it can have a constancy under negation like when the the meaning of the sentence change but the presupposition remains the same uh, like it remains true we say it is constancy under negation and then we talked about speech acts like speech act is actually uh, performing an action but that is with the with the utterance or in the speech it is not physical action it is an action that is uh, in the speech or with the utterance and it uh, can be of requesting commanding questioning or informing etc right so uh, we said that there are three different structures interrogative imperative and declarative uh, the the function of interrogative is to question the function of imperative is to uh, command or request the function of declarative is to give statement right but uh, yes uh, if uh, every structure performs its own function we say it is direct speech act but when uh, the structure doesn't perform its own function rather it performs some other function so we say it is indirect speech act right and uh, that is all hopefully you would have understood uh, this uh, chapter would continue